Peter Chur is with us. He's head of macro strategy at Academy Securities. Peter, it's good to see you. Um, I want to start with the Fed before we sort of dig into Russia. Um, what do you think the likelihood is that the Fed will avoid inversion, a recession, a hard landing? Sadly, I think it's a little bit low. If you think about financial conditions, they're basically as tight as they were in December 2018. And that's when Powell had to stop his last series of tightening. So basically, we're tightening into this weird financial market. And when you just looked at those Treasury curves, it didn't even highlight the 20-year point of the curve, which is much higher than the 30-year point. So there's all sorts of weird things going on in the Treasury market that, to me, indicate there's a lack of liquidity. You see that in the corporate bond market. I think you're even seeing it in some of this day-to-day -day action in equity side. So I'm a very concerned that we're going to see a pretty hard landing, especially when I think we are seeing another round of supply chain issues due to the Russia-Ukraine war. Peter, what does a, a hard landing look like? Who? You know, I think the Fed is going to wind up having to backpedal very quickly on terms of their number of hikes. I think we are going to see right now we see this real risk of inflation, right? You've got another bout of inflation that's going to be caused by the supply shocks in Europe. You're trying to readjust our economy around, OK, we need to build out traditional energy infrastructure to be a little bit more independent. But at the same time, we need to build out sustainability. So I see all these things occurring. It's going to be inflationary. And yet then I see growth you know, slowing probably fairly quickly as the supply chain issues hit. Um, so let's talk about the supply chain issues as well as a result of what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. And you guys have sort of an interesting um, perspective on the Russia uh, invasion of Ukraine because Academy um, services disabled veterans. You have a lot of veterans on your staff there, including uh, retired generals um, uh, uh, as part of your geopolitical intelligence group. So what is their perspective on what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, and how is that then informing um, your investment strategy? Yeah, thanks. It's been great to work with them. And I think, you know, we switched our tune late last week saying we don't think there's much chance of a peace or a ceasefire. They're just too far apart. I think what Russia wants is something that would basically allow Russia to reload and come back in and take Ukraine in years. Ukraine wants security guarantees that look a lot like NATO. So we think this is going to now be a drawn out affair. So one place that hits immediately is food. So Russia and Ukraine export about 30 percent of the world's wheat supply. And Ukraine is certainly going to have trouble planting, sowing, so expect a very low crop yield. Russia shouldn't have some of those problems, but there's a lot of questions about spoilage. Will they be able to get that grain into ships, into trains, and move it out? Because a lot of the rail system right now is being co-opted by the military, and a lot of shipping doesn't want to come through. So I think food's going to be first and foremost. But then I think what you're going to see is over the coming months, all these little snafus in the supply chain market. You're seeing a little bit where I believe Porsche had to shut down production because they can't get the electric harnesses, which were coming from Ukraine and Russia. Supposedly that region makes about 70 percent of these for all cars. So there's not another area you can ramp up. Recently, we've been following stories where Ukraine produces about 50 percent of the neon that is required to run the lasers that make semiconductor chips. Who knew that neon was that important semiconductor? I certainly didn't. So I think you're going to see these knock-on effects. And just like we've seen with China, maybe it only affects 2% of your components. But in a lot of cases, that 2% missing could stop 100% of the production. So I think we are going to see a food crisis develop. That's very concerning. And then separate on the economic side, I think Europe's going to be hit relatively quickly. And we're going to see a market slowdown right as we're hiking. So that's where I see this you know, hard landing coming from. And Peter, I was reading your latest uh, client note, and you mentioned that something broke when Russia invaded Ukraine. What did you mean by that? So I think we've already seen this trend towards autocracies, autocratic countries, and how the world's behaving. And I think once we switch Russia off of SWIFT, once we block the Russian central bank from their dollar assets, I think that's a permanent shift. China for years has been trying to get countries to use the yuan more directly. Even before the war started, right, China set up a 30-year energy deal with Russia that was going to be first denominated in euros with the potential to go to yuan. They've, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has already visited China. So I think you're going to see this world kind of break along lines of those who are very comfortable with the U.S. and our policies, so we're close allies, we agree on moral you know, values. And I think you're going to see countries that are away from that start leaning more heavily to China because China doesn't really care how you behave. And China is stepping in, supporting Russia by buying their you know, commodities throughout this. So I, I think it's not going to go back to normal. I think companies are going to have a lot of trouble going back into Russia, even if we get a truce. 
And I think a lot of other countries are going to start aligning themselves a little bit more carefully with China so that we won't have, it'll still be, a, the dollar will be the reserve currency, but China will become more and more an alternative currency and an alternative, you know, buyer of their resources. And so put that all together for us. If indeed we're going to see essentially new axes, right, uh, new political, uh, geopolitical axes, what does that mean for U.S. investors and investors you're advising? Um, how do you play that situation, especially if it's going to last a long time? Yeah, so I would say what we're thinking about it almost viewing everything from a national security lens. So anything that could have a national security impact, I think you really want to be aggressively long. So you want to own oil, natural gas, energy companies, oil services, right? Because we are going to have to build out that independence. We've kind of underinvested in that area for the last five years. Yes, we will build out sustainability, but we'll make sure we have a backup plan so we don't wound up like Europe. So I like commodities. I think we will build up a manufacturing business around countries that are close to us. And by close, I really do mean either physical proximity, because it's easier to protect and ensure those supply chains, but also political and moral values. So I think there's going to be huge opportunities in Latin and South America. We've got more opportunity to go there. They have a lot of the rare earths and critical minerals we're going to need to build out sustainable projects. So that's very good. And anything logistics, right? Anything that's going to move these things around the country or, you know, from Mexico to us or Canada to us, I really like that. So I see a kind of north-south axis developing with, you know, some input from Europe and then much more of this kind of autocratic states working together. So that's where the opportunities are, is anything that you could pick with a national you know, security lens. And I would go even as far as anything medical, PPE, right? We've learned from the pandemic, we need to make those things here, we need to protect ourselves. Um, and it, it, interesting stuff there, especially should mention, we are gonna hear from um, executives from Intel and some other chip makers later today on Capitol Hill about bringing that supply chain back to the U.S. Peter Chur, thank you for being here. It's good to see you. Head of Macro Strategy at Academy Securities.